Hello, my name is Jens Bakkevik and I'm the author of the um, Photoshop to QML exporter tool. So today I'm going to demonstrate some of the capabilities and how you can actually use it in practice. So what you're seeing here is a typical Photoshop document. It has text layers, it has normal image layers, and it has some layer groups. So the feedback I got from the previous version of the plugin was that you couldn't really organize the documents properly because I exported everything as a QML element. And that was uh, essentially a bit too rough when you actually started to work with these documents in practice. So I'm just going to quickly export the output here. And the the default settings, the settings you generally want to use are, are group layers and export QML here. So I'm just going to quickly give this a name. I'll call this example. And I'll dump this in the example. And do an export. And I also have a nice little progress bar here so you can see how far the uh, plugin is. So that's it. And uh, while I have a look at that, I'm going to start exporting a slightly more complex document. Now this is something I got from, from our designer. And uh, it's a much more complex document than the, than the other one. So let's just see how it copes with, with exporting this. And as you actually go in here, you can see it contains of literally hundreds of these sub layers and elements. Uh, like the shadows here are a really, really complex structure with different filters and effects applied. So um, I'm going to export that one as well. And again, when you do group layers, it will only export what you see here as individual layers. And also if you toggle visibility by default, that means you don't export the item at all. Uh, but if you do check the export hidden, that enables you to export, for instance, you have this design grid here, which isn't generally useful, so I don't want to export that. But if you say you have buttons and you want to have layers, with, for instance, a pressed picture and a non-pressed picture, you can export the hidden layers and they will show up as invisible QML elements and you can just toggle the visibility and QML instead. So let's just start the export here since it's a little bit time consuming. And I'm dumping this to notes and I will dump this in test notes. And uh, let's see how that works. So uh, this will take a little bit of little time so meanwhile we're just gonna have a look at the previous document and I go in here I look at the recent files uh, test example example is the document I exported first you can actually go into the design editor here and you will be able to recognize that it's the essentially the same document we had in Photoshop and some of the neat properties that are being exp exported here if I enable the right sidebar are things like the opacity so although that was set down in, in Photoshop, I can actually make it fully opaque because all the pix maps are of course exported at full opacity. And I can go back in here and I can actually change the text on the button. And you can also see that the layer group, although this actually consists of four different layers in the Photoshop version, it only has uh, one QML element. And the, uh, the output looks like this. It's a very, very basic QML element. But still, it, it gives you that little starting, that, that nice starting point from, from having nothing to actually getting back and, and starting to work on the code. So you can see all the offsets are here. You don't have to do any slicing or anything like that. It just skips that process. And you get like things like font color, font family, pixel size, uh, opacity. So, so the basic, all the basic features of the Photoshop structure is there. So let's see how far we are on our Photoshop export. Let's, looks like we are almost done and there it is it should now be fully exported so let me look close this example and we will go back and look at the notes example so what does this look like now that's what this looks like of course this is just a static image now uh, well it's not really an image because we have split out all the relevant aspects into separate files so if you actually look at the design of this document it looks like this. And I can actually go in here and I can modify the position of these elements relative to each other. I can toggle them on and off and see see how they work. So what if I actually want to make this a little bit interactable? I want to make this somewhat interesting. Um, how can I do this? Well, if I just go back into the code, um, I'm just going to demonstrate how we can make this thing flickable to give you a little bit more realistic feeling. So how can we do this? 
Well, the first thing I'm going to do, because we have a very flat structure here now, they just ha have the x and y coordinates of each layer individually. But what I can do, I can create a flickable inside my background element. A flickable is basically a QML element that you can move up and down, sort of a scroll region. And inside that flickable, I will only move my note layer, my picture layers, and the title layer, and they're now inside the flickable. And uh, I need to anchor dot fill parent so the flickable fits inside the background. And one little thing I notice here is that the actual background layer is larger than the uh, the, the visual rect of the screen. So I, I see it's like 72 pixels on the left side here, and you can you can actually tell between. No, it's actually 52. You can actually tell by this offset. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna Adjust a little bit for that. I mean, this is a bit trial and error, but let's see. Anchors the left margin is parent. The x is negative parent x, meaning it's it's shifted by the same amount that the background is shifted over to the left. We shift it to the right. So that's basically a technical detail. And to make it flickable, because default this, these things actually fit inside the view, so I wouldn't be able to flick it up up and down. I'm gonna say that the uh, content height is actually 3000, so I can flick it a bit up and down. Let's see how this works. I run it now, and as you can see, I now have a interactable application. I can actually move it up and down in here. So I'm already on my way. What if I want to animate a little bit? I see this little calendar here. How about we just want to fade that into view? So I'm just going to go down and look at the creation date, which is the name of that layer. And instead of just saying opacity is one, which means it's fully visible, I'm going to say number animation on opacity. And we're going to say from 0 to 1. And duration is going to be 500 milliseconds. And I run this. You can see it actually fades in. It may be a little bit too fast there if you notice. I'm going to try it again. You can now see it smoothly fades in. And we can do some other cool stuff. For instance, these guys are our elements. We can, make them. We can actually rotate them a little bit. So I'm going to move up here. And I'm going to say that the... Uh, the picture here is going to have a number animation on rotation, and it's going to be I don't want to call in there. It's going to be from zero to forty degrees. Duration is going to be two thousand, and I'm going to have a uh, easing dot type easing dot out cubic. Now that's just to smooth the, tr the thing a bit. And uh, you can do the opposite thing for the other picture. So we just go to minus 40 and see what that looks like. You can actually see these pictures are smoothly animating now. So that's it. That's like this is this is really cool stuff. It just is a small teaser on, on how you can actually work directly with Photoshop elements. Of course if you actually go back to the Photoshop document now and change things uh, and you re-export, and you're going to overwrite those changes. So if you just want to update the artwork, you might want to do this again, but make sure to uncheck Export QML so it doesn't actually rewrite the QML changes that you did. So that's it. Thank you, and uh, have a nice day.